Nintendo may not want to tell us anything about Switch 2 yet, but they just made a huge move that tells us a lot about Switch 2, if you know what I mean. What's going on, everybody? It's Zachary Switch Force. This move really sets the stage for something that's going to be very important for Nintendo if they have any hopes or dreams of making Switch 2 somehow a better system than Switch 1. I know that seems crazy for a 140 million unit seller that has some of the best games Nintendo's ever released, but there is always the possibility to go up instead of down. And today's move is absolutely for the Switch 2 and for a specific area of Switch 2 that I think we thought was a strength of Switch 1, but really didn't end up becoming much of a strength. You can let me know what you think in the comments down below, but let's begin with the Switch 1 launch and Nintendo's lack of third-party support. We had a few things come out early on in the Switch lifecycle, but there wasn't much. And this was twofold, right? It was one, because Nintendo had a really crummy era with the Wii U, and they lost a lot of third-party support that they had at the onset of that console launch. The other reason was that the Switch is underpowered, and so it was very hard for some developers to make games cross-platform when they couldn't really trust that Nintendo was going to sell a bunch of Switches, and the system itself just wasn't strong enough to make porting and development easy. But then Nintendo seemed to gain some ground and garner a lot of third-party love once their system started selling like hotcakes. All of a sudden, we're like, oh, dude, Mario plus Rabbids, a Ubisoft exclusive. Okay, we're getting FIFA and NBA 2K. Wow, this is great. We're getting The Witcher 3. But as time went on, it became kind of clear that we were getting a certain kind of game. We were getting a certain kind of third-party port. And those were almost all old or very, very reduced versions. The FIFA that I mentioned, yeah, it sucked for years. The Witcher and the Bioshock and the Batman, those are nice to have, but most of the games from third parties that came to Switch were old titles. And they felt very novel and fun, I think, particularly because for many of them, it was the first time on a Nintendo platform and you could play them handheld. Remember that when the Switch came out, Steam Deck wasn't a thing. All these like handheld PCs weren't a thing. And it was very, very cool to have these like third party games that previously had no handheld to go to play on Nintendo Switch. You could play Borderlands 2 handheld. You couldn't do that before because like Borderlands 1 was on 3DS and the Switch was a significant step up from the 3DS. So it did feel like, wow, this is awesome to play all these games handheld on the go portably. It was really a big deal. That big deal wore off though as time went on and we began to realize that we didn't get very many new games as third-party support on Nintendo Switch. And many exclusives, they they didn't really show up. Like outside of Mario plus Rabbids, Sparks of Hope, what else was there? What, what else exclusive did a third party bring? Because Monster Hunter Rise was probably the biggest and it eventually became on every other platform. Now we can still count that as like a big third party get and there were blips where Nintendo did really well with third parties. Capcom, I think, was one of their best supporters and, and Ubisoft as well. But for the most part, we got cloud versions, which I think should be outlawed on Switch 2. No more of that. We don't need it. We don't want it. Please. Like, they're fun if you have perfect internet and they're okay, but they were expensive, oftentimes did not run well, and sometimes were just outright terrible, like the Kingdom Hearts cloud editions when they first came out. Then we have our slew of old ports, and then we had very, very few day and date releases on Nintendo Switch. Like sometimes we would get a game like Mortal Kombat where it came out the same day and we were like, okay, this is absolutely incredible. This is awesome. And then we had times where we were promised games like Dying Light 2, Marvel's Midnight Suns, Hogwarts Legacy. Two of those never even materialized and one came out like a long time later. So the Switch actually didn't have a lot of third party support in the traditional sense. It had sort of atypical third-party support with companies hiring port studios to push their older titles and try to dig more money out of a pot that may have been currently empty. And that was fun for a while and still can sometimes be fun if you have a nostalgic kick. But for the most part, third-party support on Nintendo Switch wasn't all that great. So today's announcement is really awesome because Geo Corsi, formerly one of the heads of third parties over at Sony PlayStation, announced that he is coming to Nintendo to help build their third party portfolio management AAA style. 
Now this is meaningful, and this is a big get for Nintendo because Gio Corsi is someone that not only tried to pump up the PlayStation Vita, he clearly has a love for handhelds, but he built out bringing Yakuza back to the West at a time when they weren't really doing a lot of localizations. And now Yakuza has become a huge franchise and their games have multiplied and they're putting them out on all platforms except for Nintendo. So it's a really, a guy who really knows and has passion for driving third-party support to a system, especially from Eastern developers. Now, this is very interesting and important because I think a lot of Nintendo's connections do lie with those more Eastern Japanese developers and publishers like a Capcom and Monster Hunter Rise. But securing deals and securing support and early support is going to be key. So if Geo can go in there and help Nintendo woo some of these Eastern publishers, big Capcom games, your Resident Evils, your Monster Hunters, and also work with the Ubisofts, the EAs, and others to bring Call of Duty, to bring sports titles, to bring big shooters, to bring big IP titles like when Hogwarts Legacy comes out, let's make sure that we have enough funding going to the Switch version so that it comes out. This is the Switch 2 trying to one-up the Switch by emphasizing third party in a AAA new space. The Switch 2 will still be underpowered when it comes out in comparison to its console counterparts, but it's gonna be a lot closer and I believe there'll be a lot more opportunity for Nintendo to say, hey, like we do have the power and we do have the DLSS and the algorithmic learning and equations to at least make the game look pretty good. At least make it run easy-ish. At least the porting should be more doable for these studios without them devoting an entire port studio to it or having to devote a separate project, time, dollars, etc. I don't think Nintendo is going to get every game day and date, but I sure believe they're going to get many more. And if we look at Nintendo Switch and say, yes, third party was sort of okay, it really ended up being a weakness. I think just because there's the odd Doom Eternal or the Mortal Kombat or the Monster Hunter Rise, it does not take away from the fact that majority of the games do not come on Switch. And as Nintendo fans, we've gotten accustomed to that because it's been sort of par for the course for many generations. But at one point in time, the Super Nintendo had all the games. And I believe Nintendo and Furukawa would love for that to be the case yet again. A Switch 2 that not only has the powerhouse Nintendo titles, but also powerhouse AAAs. Because at a certain point, putting old games on the Switch 2 isn't going to move the needle very much. Not only has it happened for seven or eight years on the Switch 1, but you also have alternative solutions like the Steam Deck where those games are inevitably cheaper. Steam sales allow you to pick up titles like Crisis 3 for pennies, whereas picking it up on Switch is going to be exponentially more. You can go grab the Bioshock collection or the Batman Arkham collection and it'll not only run better, but it'll be way cheaper to get on your Steam Deck or your handheld portable PC. So I believe that in the Switch 2 era, we're talking 2025, 2026, 2027, it's not going to be novel enough for these third-party games, old third-party games, to come to Switch and still draw a ton of buzz and push a ton of console sales. What would help drive Nintendo console sales? Knowing that not only do you get the great first-party games, the Marios, the Zeldas, the Xenoblades, but you also can get the third-party titles. You aren't required to have two systems. That became kind of a thing with the Nintendo Switch was like, okay, it's a Nintendo Switch and a PlayStation or a Nintendo Switch and an Xbox. And some people are totally fine with just a Switch and there will still be those people with Switch 2. But if we're talking about improving the Switch to the Switch 2, if we're talking about building it potentially bigger, better, and maybe even able to sell more, I think third-party games are going to be huge. And as there's less and less exclusives out there, that means there's more and more multi-platform games. And with more and more multi-platform games, Nintendo is absolutely iced out of that arena unless they make good moves with their hardware and good moves like hiring Geo Corsi to go out there and work deals and convince these other developers and publishers that, hey, the Nintendo ecosystem and the Nintendo audience are ready for your games. It's going to be a worthwhile thing. It's not just the Zelda Mario system. We can support other franchises as well. And we've got the hardware to allow you to make it happen without an insane amount of effort. I think this is going to be a awesome move that really helps shape the future for Nintendo and it does something that I've hoped they would do which is emphasize the third party support for day and date for new games not for the old stuff not for digging out of the catalog what IP do we have that we could make a few extra bucks off of but no 
Give us Assassin's Creed Red and Far Cry 7 and give us Persona 6 and give us Metaphor Refantasio and give us the next Monster Hunter and give us all these games on Switch 2 because that is how Nintendo builds a better console for their next generation. And I think this is going to be the pin mark for the start of this. Geo Corsi, I'm putting a lot on your plate, but you've done really well with Sony. You are also working with many other studios as well. And I think you can bring your knowledge and your experience to Nintendo and do wonders for the Switch 2 in ways that the Switch 1 just couldn't, and in ways the Switch 2 won't be able to. That novelty has worn off for the Switch in many ways, and I think it's going to be gone for the Switch 2. You can't have a launch year of Switch 2 where they're like, guess what? You get to play these old open world games on the Switch 2, like at that point. I mean, there's some that would still be like, okay, Cyberpunk on Switch 2 would still be like fun, but I'm talking about when we're drawing way back, and we can't do cloud versions. None of that, please. I think the Switch 2's, one of their main goals is to eliminate things like cloud versions and to allow Geo Corsi to cook. So cook, Mr. Corsi, cook. And let me know in the comments down below what third-party games you'd like to see most on Switch. Not old stuff, but like new upcoming stuff. What are you hungry for to play on your Switch that previously wouldn't have been possible? Let me know your take in the comments down below, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. Love you lots. Switch Force, out.